China wants Taiwan. The question is the method. The huge Pacific powers of China and the US are gearing up for a conflict at some point in the future. What is the European dog in this particular fight? And can the European Union have any say in the matter anyway? Join me, Jan Daras, for how we got here. China's strategy towards Taiwan has increasingly relied on a combination of incentives and pressures, often referred to as a carrot and stick approach. This method aims to destabilize Taiwan politically while promoting the benefits of closer ties with the mainland, all without resorting to military force. Following Taiwan's January elections, China has intensified efforts to exploit political divisions within Taiwan. By emphasizing the economic benefit of cooperation and fostering people-to-people -people contacts, China seeks to persuade the Taiwanese public of the advantages of integration with the mainland. This strategy includes promoting narratives that highlight the economic prosperity and stability that could come from unification. China's approach also involves significant propaganda efforts. These include strengthening cooperation with pro-China politicians in Taiwan, organizing trips for Taiwanese working on the mainland, and framing the elections as a choice between peace and conflict. The European Union is actively trying to counter that. Strengthening comprehensive contact with Taipei is part of the EU's strategy to counterbalance China's influence and support Taiwan's autonomy. One more powerful ally watching Taiwan's back is the U.S. While China's rapidly expanding arsenal and evolving strategy fuels concerns of a potential showdown over Taiwan, the U.S. is gearing up for nuclear readiness exercises. The drills underscore the gravity of the situation. The island, which China considers a breakaway province, has been a flashpoint in U.S.-China relations, with Washington reaffirming its commitment to Taiwan's defense. Our guest today is Dr. Marcin Przechodniak, a research fellow at the Polish Institute of International Affairs based here in Warsaw. Welcome once more to the program. Hello, thank great. you for having me. Yes, yeah, always great to have you. Um, we're going to discuss your paper, uh, rather enigmatically titled Carrot and Stick, Chinese policy with regard to Taiwan that you, that you wrote recently. Um, can you just broadly outline the uh, themes of your uh, pay, uh, your paper and what's what's the carrot and what's the stick? Yeah, the, the idea of the paper was to present the actual, I mean, this year's policy to by the Chinese policy towards Taiwan, and I mean uh, by that I mean the what what the Chinese leadership are, is trying to do to actually stick to the actual uh, still still very important plan of uh, taking over Taiwan but uh, respond to the current circumstances. And um, so the carrot are the different offers, mostly economic offers, to the Taiwanese society, to their entrepreneurs, to companies, uh, uh, allow them to, make, to do business on the, in China, on the continent. Uh, but on the other hand, using stick as to present the current Taiwanese Taiwan's leadership as a destabilization, as a, as, a, as a party, as a leadership which is interested in destabilization. And this all is being packed by, the, by China as, you know, as their attempts to declare Taiwan's independence or even uh, uh, gaining for more international recognition. So these are two different ways of presenting. And they, it seems like Chinese leadership, China, has is now aware that it even though they do still the target is still valid right we take taking that's over strategy Taiwan. yeah that's a strategy out of many different reasons but still but they are aware that they don't really have a potential right now to be to engage more in terms of active actions in terms of uh, uh not maybe invading but in terms of the success of this possible operation. So they need to prepare. They need time to prepare, so, but also they need to, they are thinking how to uh, maybe not convince Taiwanese society because it's, that's probably impossible. Uh, however, I'm not so sure they, they are aware of the situation right now in the island, but I, I don't think that they believe that they can convince Taiwanese people to actually agree to the possible integration and then uh, taking over. So they are trying to, f to, to make the situ political situation on the island much worse in order to 
um, to make a Taiwanese people believe that the current Taiwan's leadership is responsible for that. That, they need, that there is a need in Taiwan to change their leadership in order to uh, engage more with China and in the longer process to create this situation more favorable from Chinese perspective, you know, to, to be over to, to integrate more. Is this like a, to, to uh, re replicate the conditions of this little island which is very close to China, uh, uh, Kinan, and it seems to be uh, uh, existing in a gray zone of um, half ch half in China, trading a lot of with with China, and but still formally in Taiwan. Are they kind of seeking a gradual approach in this? No, I don't think so. No, they just you know this is the, the, the approach towards Taiwan at all. I mean, the, all the islands and and generally toward, towards Taiwanese society. I mean, you have just and there are also of course other sticks in in the sense that they are uh, saying to the Taiwanese people in through different statements that uh, they're, open to in, they're open to cooperation, but not with the current leadership, which means the Democratic Progressive Party and the current president, especially after the recent elections there were, which were in Taiwan. Uh, they also are saying, it's not only applies to the leadership, but they also uh, defined much stricter the possible actions of how you know, of promoting independence in the Chinese legislation, which already exists, but right now, this year, they were uh, delivered to certain um, guidelines for the Chinese prosecution and the Chinese institution to uh, prosecute Taiwanese, which might be in, uh, perceived as people seeking or promoting independence. And there are already people being uh, prosecuted and sentenced in China, Taiwanese officials, and uh, citizens sentenced and persecuted in China for being a promoter of independence, let's call it that. And Is this likely to uh, backfire in, in, on the mainland, or the, or the, sorry, on the island of, China, of Taiwan itself, in that the more pressure you put on Taiwanese society, the, it's just going to be more resistant to, to Chinese pressure? Yeah, I think that might, that might be the case. I mean, as I said in the beginning, Chinese leaders or authorities might not be very much aware of what's the actual uh, thinking of Taiwanese people towards the continent. They're towards, just waiting to be liberated by Beijing. Us, but for sure there is a very tense political situation in Taiwan itself right now. I mean, I mentioned Democratic Progressive Party, but it, 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 it has its president, president is from the party, but it does not have majority in the parliament. And there are certain different political, two different political parties which are uh, which are in a coalition government, and China is trying to also use this situation, you know, influencing the different initiatives, you know, creating this atmosphere of, by, by different disinformation and manipulation tactics, creating the atmosphere among the Taiwanese people that, uh, that this, the future of Taiwan is not so certain under current leadership. Yes. You mentioned also how this impacts on the European Union. Um, we're playing a, a kind of a, a tightrope. On the one hand, you, you said, you wrote that part of the EU strategy should be to encompass Taiwan and to enfold it into much many more uh, international institutions. And yet we're, we're trade, trade with China is huge. How, how does, does, has the EU squared that particular circle, or does it have to? Yeah, I think the main main thing here is that EU needs to be, and I think it is to some extent, sure that any possible destabilization in the region, in the Taiwanese Strait, and we're not saying here, we, I'm not even saying about the conflict, but uh, any different, more aggressive actions by Chinese towards Taiwan would have a very serious impact, economic impact, on the EU itself. So the point here is to support Taiwan in a sense that it will make it more resilient towards China. I mean, the, to raise the stake for China if it would like to go further in its actions. But it, this is, of course, a long-term perspective. I mean, as I m mentioned in the beginning, the current Chinese uh, perspectives and uh, objectives right now are not very much into going into conflict or destabilizing situation in terms of possible economic uh, disaster in, in the region and then globally. 
that that's the probably long term scenario or, or at least short term scenario uh, middle term scenario so has the has the, uh, the the plan the invasion plan which i'm sure they do have one um, has that been shelved because of the they're looking at Rus the russian experience in the uh, renewed invasion of ukraine and saying well we have to yeah. A, a, a conventional and amphibious invasion is probably not on the cards just yet. Yeah, I mean, the military, from the military perspective, you know, the invasion on Taiwan compared to uh, Russian aggression on Ukraine, these are two very different stories. But, uh, and, and it had impact on Chinese thinking. I mean, what happened to Russians and how they did not succeed on, in Ukraine. Uh, but uh, I think there are much more important internal issues from Chinese perspective, which make the scenario of invasion or, I don't know, military offensive towards the generally Taiwan or part of Taiwan uh, less probable in the coming months or even years. Where this is mainly this is the economic situation in China, but generally speaking, it has to be a success. And Chinese leadership cannot be sure right now that it, such an operation would end up as a success. I mean, they, have, they cannot be quite sure also of, the, of, the, on, of their own uh, military capabilities. I mean, the, the PLA is very much in the, in the middle of reform. It, it is not very Untested. politically stable. I mean, we just saw recent uh, reports on, on how Xi Jinping changes his, his commanders. And, and, you know, this is still in the process of reforming. Uh, so uh, until Xi Jinping himself or the leadership will not be 100% sure that any kind of military action towards Taiwan would be a 100% success. I think they will not engage in that kind of uh, operation. So uh, a brief question, uh, last question to you. Um, what, what are the options? Um, we see the uh, rather looming conflict, China and the US in the Pacific. Uh, both staffs are probably planning for a, a naval conflict. Um, in pre-1914, the German uh, Navy used to toast for the, the day, the day when they took on the Royal Navy. Is there a certain inevitability or a certain collision course that these two uh, powers will find themselves on despite what they think? No, I, I don't, I, I'm not so sure about that. I mean, of course, but there are certain signals that might be that might, you know, that might let us think that what you're saying is is probable, but uh, wars and especially wars like that does not start because of so, you know, because of accidents or some actions which are, which you know, might not be foreseeable, but happen, right? I mean, to, to have a huge conflict between U.S. and China, even in the Pacific, yes, you don't, you know, it, it does not you don't require, uh, yeah, it, yeah, so this is not, it's not so easy as it might be, might be thinking about, but I believe that still Chinese leadership, if speaking specifically about Taiwan, they still are thinking about considering, about creating some new approach I mean, because of the, the failure of the two, one country, two system model, which of course, and, and they are aware that Taiwanese will not believe because of what happened in Hong Kong. I mean, this, is, this was a certain failure from China's perspective, if we talk about their strategy towards Taiwan. I mean, uh, so they are trying right now to, 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 to win time to, 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 and to still believe that to change the Taiwanese approach a bit, the society in general. I'm not so sure it's probable, but I think that's what they believe, that uh, the, the main approach will be like that. And so, and of course, I mean, you mentioned US, we will have an elections in two months. Yeah. So that's probably another, another factor which in, in influences their actions. And yeah. they need to wait until the new uh, uh, president yes, so, will be so. there. So at least until January with some new initiatives or strategies. I mean, right now, until the end of the year, they will try to build up this situation in Taiwan, as I mentioned before. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, thank Marcin Przechodniak, for coming once more onto our program. Great thank you very much. So that's all we have time for once more. Uh, do join us again, please, next time for How We Got Here.